One venue that doesn't immediately spring to mind as a motorsporting mecca is this clay track at Smallfield in Surrey, quietly nestling alongside the M23 under the flight path to Gatwick Airport. But there are those who say that it does deserve its own proud place in Motorsports Hall of Fame. Famous for what exactly? Banger racing, that's what. <laughs> The Banger Racers' small field offers some great potential. Deep ditches and tall banks where you can stuff other cars and leave them marooned for an entire race. It also attracts the best material. That's what Banger Racers call their cars. Old Jaguars, Rovers, Granadas and large Nissans and Toyotas are the biggest material that crush the best. And most importantly, since Banger Racing is a tribal affair, Smallfield gets the best teams. They arrive with their vehicles carefully stacked on large trucks. But what makes them do it? They don't come here to win, come here to do the job of severe jacking up and uh, wrecking other people's motors and have a fun day. So you'd rather do that than get one of those trophies at the end? I've had loads of trophies, I don't want no more. <laughs> I think it was a Jekyll and Hyde, they should have go out and something just clicks inside your brain and says, right, I've got to go and I'm going to hit that bloke and I'm going to win. Um, and I think it's just that sort of way it works in your mind. I don't think everybody's cut out for it. You get some people out there and they don't like touching and they sort of put a hand up and they do make contact, but that's not the sport. Now, it's uh, quite unusual. There aren't too many lady drivers here today. In fact, there isn't anybody else. Well, no. Um, I don't know why, really. I think women enjoy it just as much and there's special women's meetings maybe once or twice a year, which is a big turnout. They just don't tend to do it with the men. I, I don't really see the reason why not. I think we can drive as well. Why on earth do you have this hearse? Well, it's just something different, and it? Crowd like all that sort of thing, don't I? Just like, just, just for a pose. Oh, I see. Is it any more difficult to drive than another car? No, nah, it's a bit easier, actually, because the wheelbase is so much longer. It's a lot harder to spin out, but it should be all right. And, uh, I mean, our hearse is particularly strong. This one, eh? It's all plastic. Well, that's not very good, is it? Plastic? Yeah. Like I say, it's only just for a pose, just look, something different. But, I mean, you're the, the champion and everything. You've got a lot to lose if you uh, go out. Another car, aren't I? All oh, right. So I've got a fresh car for the final. So it'll be all... But uh, I thought you could only have one car. No, because I'm reigning champion. Three years in a row, they, they let me have a fresh car for the final. So I could... Um, not bother racing all day and just qualify for the final. So I'm instamatically qualified for the final because I'm a champion. All these uh, wonderful cars with sort of classic cars and things here, what do people think about that? Well, some, like Jaguars, not really classic cars, like XJs, but the old Rovers in Westminster's are and all the rest of it, you know. The old Humbers and that are a bit classic, but what else can you do with them? Well, don't people think it's a bit of a waste? Yeah, some people get very upset because, you know, you see an old classic car go round, but they've all got to die some, eh? You're going to look after our camera, are you? Yes, hopefully, certainly. <laughs> I doubt if the others will, though, because they know I've got it in there. You're a marked man now, you know, yeah, you've got top gear in the car. Yeah, I have been told I'm a marked man, so I'm going to have to just get the hell out of it, I reckon. In fact, he needn't have worried. Smallfield is noted for his friendly atmosphere, and even though it was Basher's first time here, he was quickly into the swing of it. Mind you, he had chosen the current favourite banger, the XJ Jag. It has the speed to get away from following cars and the strength to do some serious damage. And there are plenty of them about at 30 quid a time from your local scrapyard. You can catch up with slower cars, nudge them gently to expose the rear flank, then go for the kill and use your weight to flick them into the ditch. If Jaguars are good news, some cars you'd expect to do well don't. The Volvo's crumple zones are too soft for the banger track. Racing a small field is usually unlimited, and that means what it says. You can race what you like. The only sort of car you're not allowed to bring is anything American. Not surprising, I suppose, when you think of the squashing potential of old Detroit iron in this sort of caper. 
One piece of venerable British machinery that didn't seem up to it, on account of troublesome rear suspension, was the Triumph 2000. How many laps did you manage to do here? Uh, about half. So how does that go in your scale of things? Um, um, it's about what I usually do. I usually do about half a lap and end up in the ditch. <laughs> and he wasn't the only competitor <laughs> undeterred by a foray into the small field ditches. What are you going to do now? Just get my car running again, go out in the next race and hopefully put someone in hospital. <laughs> nice. So it's uh, looking a bit second hand now, Joe. Is this what you expected? Yeah, it done better than what I did. I didn't think it even finished the race. But you yeah, did very well, actually, yeah, didn't it was you? Right, wasn't it? Finished the race. But uh, I mean, obviously you can't continue anymore, can you? Yeah, it'll be all right. You're joking. You're going to get it running again? Yeah. That'll be what. Be out in the DD anyway. But all the backs all uh, dragging on the floor. Cut it off. Oh, well, that'll be interesting. There's no end to the determination of banger racers to keep their cars going. I went off to inspect what they call a fresh one. It may all look pretty slapdash, but actually the cars are very carefully prepared. They're stripped of all glass and flammable materials, the radiators removed and replaced with a water tank in the back, and the small petrol tanks installed. The bonnet's fastened down with sturdy bolts. For the driver, there's a set of full harness seat belts and a roll bar, and one or two other precautions are taken to stop the doors flapping about. But you can't weld them up, or any other part of the bodywork for that matter, because that would make it too strong, and that would be an unfair advantage. With this amount of physical contact, of course, accidents do happen, and I couldn't help noticing quite a few drivers with the odd bruise and a missing tooth or two. It's particularly dangerous when you're pushed up against the banks. It's OK at first when one car follows in, but when a second car arrives before the first driver had the chance to get out... I didn't expect anyone to survive that. Well, you did well to get out of there. Yeah, bit sore, bit sore. All right, though. We'll take it back, straighten it out now, come out next race. Well, 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 anyway... Apart these... from the steering wheel's broke. <laughs> you can say that again. I've been out with my face. <laughs> Not surprisingly, this was one car that didn't make it back to race again later. One problem with Smallfield is that it's made out of clay. All very well, but when it rains, everything grinds to a slithering and sliding halt. But that couldn't dampen my enthusiasm for the friendly atmosphere and a form of motorsport that's refreshingly free of all those rules, regulations, governing bodies and red tape. <laughs>